Right guys, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Um, today, we've got a few things going on. I'm just doing a feed. It is a Friday morning, so we do a three day mix for the weekend. Um, cows are all shut back. I'm gonna let them back out and whatever that hasn't been cleaned up here, they can have a bit of a feed on whilst I'm doing the mix. Um, so they're all bedded and cleaned and scraped. Got pools over there, done all the same to them. Uh, we've got a big flood I wanna go and try and deal with. I think the drain's just blocked. Get rid of that. Might start getting some sheds ready for housing cattle next week. I haven't filmed anything I've done so far because the battery on my GoPro was dead. Really good YouTuber. Uh, and it keeps dying as I'm filming this. Right, so the battery keeps dying. I've got a little bit of charge on it now. But um, the morning is not really going to plan. This tractor here, which is Big Boots, where to start. So we're going to have to hook the cables. It's now living Big Boots because he's really good at not starting. Up to the 1.30, we've got the little positive there we can just put the earth on there or something um, the gas struts on this bonnet are also broken so he won't stay up so i've got to find something to prop that up with one of those mornings but um there must be something wrong with the alternator or, so, or, or something he's working long enough and he's running hard to give himself plenty of charge when we are using him we're only using him three times a week but he shouldn't be uh shouldn't be not starting like that right we're all hooked up He really is dead this morning. Might have to go and put a few revs on the old uh, 130 there. We have life! Right, now that I've got a bit of charge on this thing, and I finally got the tractor running, I can sort of tell you what's going on. So, in our mix on a Monday and a Wednesday, we put in two bales of silage, which we've got here, and a bale of hay, just to dry it up a bit. Helps it have room and develop and all that sort of stuff. Um, on a Friday, I've got three bales of silage and a bale of hay just to see them through the weekend so no one has to feed them. We've got first cut silage bales here. These were made right at the beginning of May. Really, really good grass, uh, good protein in it. Um, so yeah, they're doing really well on that. It does go through them quite quick, um, hence why we're feeding the hay. The other thing we're feeding is wheat distillers. So you would have seen this being delivered in a previous video. So these are the wheat distillers. Tiny little nuts, quite a lot of dust. Um, they're a bit damper than sugar beet. They get half a kilo a head per day of that, and then they also get a kilo of sugar beet um, per head per day. I've got to work out what I need of that. I'm going to get the sugar beet, put that in. We'll then put the rest of the silage in, let it all mix for a while, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Oh, and minerals. We're putting 100 grams of minerals, just general purpose cow minerals, uh, in per head per day as well. Right, I've just come back down to the beef shed whilst that is mixing. Um, it wants probably another five minutes to mix, just to make sure everything's mixed through thoroughly and evenly. Um, you would have seen on a previous video, we gave these cattle here some boluses because we were worried about their trace element um, levels um, because they were looking a bit poor, their growth rates had sort of dropped off and the history of the field they were in was known to be iodine deficient. We actually had some blood work done on some of them. Um, I can pick one of them out. Was this guy one of them? Yeah, so this guy, he had some blood work done because his growth rate was rubbish. You can see he is quite thin compared to his mate next door. So we did blood work on four cows, or three calves and one cow, because there's a cow in the pen there that was a bit poor as well. Um, the blood work come back with these guys being deficient in selenium. So obviously that's something they get from silage and grass. Um, perhaps just because the weather was so poor this year or the field they were on is deficient anyway. Um, they were low in that. So the bolus that we've given them will cover them for that. They were also low in something else, um, which I can't pronounce very well. I'll have to have a look on my phone. So low in albumin. Someone in the know will know what that means. But anyway, that's caused by a low protein diet. So again, the quality of the grass they were on obviously wasn't good enough to keep the level of that up in them. So the diet that they are on now is plenty good enough to, uh, to cover that. So the calves hopefully should be sorted um, and once they're settled on this diet, because it takes two or three weeks for a cow to settle on a new diet, they'll be flying. Well, that is the hope. The cow that was poor, which is this one here, 2277. They're still doing blood work on her. Um, she looks a lot better now that they, they've come inside. She looks a lot fuller and she just looks better. Um, if they want to do blood work for yonis. We really hope it's not yonis um, or John's disease, whatever people call it. Um, that is a disaster that's just like a, a wasting disease cattle get and they'll just they'll waste away to nothing uh, if you have clinical symptoms of it um, 
but also potentially liver damage. So uh, it could be fluke, uh, it could be a number of things, but they've been wormed and fluked, all the animals in this building since coming in. Um, so hopefully it was, it was fluke. I'll say they're still doing the blood work. If I get the results back before the video goes out, we'll, uh, we'll let you know, but yeah. Hopefully it's fluke. Hopefully the fluke that we've given them or the fluke aside we've given them will have sorted that. But um, I mean, she's eating as much as the rest of them are and she, she does look a lot better. So hopefully we're on the right direction with that one. Whilst we're on the subject of trace elements, I've just brought down some tubby buckets for the bulls. So we've got Norm, uh, Vander and Valter down the end who's having a drink. Um, just because, again, all this work we're doing, we're finding out that we've got low trace elements in some of the cattle. We want to make sure the bulls are in the right place. I know we're not going to be using them till May, so what's that, seven months away. Um, but they've got to keep the right condition over winter. They've got to be ready to go when we want to use them. And the lack of trace elements in a bull can lead to low fertility, which, um, you know, that is really what you don't want. They're here to do one job, and if they're not fertile, they're not doing it right. So. That's why we're doing that. These two guys, they're just um, the two calves that were left in Tyre. So they've seen the vet now, so they're no longer in Tyre. They'll join a group of calves the same age as them when they come in. We have what we call a farm spare slash store group. So anything that doesn't go over to the other farm um, on the science sheds or isn't a breeding heifer, whatever's left over, um, we just finish them up as, as fat cattle. So these guys will join that group. But I better go turn off the mixer wagon. Otherwise it'll be over mixed. What I'm gonna do, is leave these guys whilst they're going to have a cup of coffee just to finish up all this little bit. You see they're all there tucking into it. They'll finish that in, uh, in 20, 30 minutes. So we'll let them do that and then we'll spit it out after coffee. The job will be a good one. even going to bother trying to speak over the noise of that but um we'll turn this off which could be fatal worst comes to worst we'll just jump it again right i'm just going to tidy up my plastic i got on the floor then i'm going to have a cup of coffee we'll feed that out and then we'll go and find this flood i think now you might have already noticed baby face josh um i put a call out to a couple of the other farming youtuber social media people about having a go at movember so today is the 4th of November um, and I shaved everything off on the 1st. This is the regrowth we've had so far. Uh, by the end of the month we might have a little bit of summit back but just an excuse to look stupid online. Don't really need an excuse for that do we but hopefully uh, some of the others will get involved. I believe Crawford and uh, Mr Pemberton have agreed to so it'll be good fun I expect. Anyone else who wants to have a go by all means have a go. Tractor started right up this time. It just gets lazy if you leave them for a couple of days. Uh, I've got to turn that one on. Turn back. Next week it will be absolutely fine because all the cattle are coming home, so we'll be using this every day to feed up. But if you leave them for a couple of days, it just doesn't like starting. Um, whether there is an alternative problem, I don't know. But anyway, we're going to go and feed this out. All the cattle have come running out. Now they know the feeder's here. Um, so our elevator on our feeder it's actually fabricated by Craig and a local mechanic. Um, so it's sort of homemade. So it runs on this thing here that hasn't got a um, function. So the spooling gear, I believe up is out. Yeah, yeah, he's down. This one here puts the bed going. You know, the bed is flowing. Fly back into the right location. Start up the power shaft. Get some revolutions going. Apologies for the state of the window. Uh, this is the door. And then we should have silage coming. We can alter the speed of the bed here on this dial. We'll go up to about number, top of number four. Now there's a lot of food in this wagon and it's gonna look like a monstrosity of food along here. It's gonna be a load. But it'll keep them going for today, tomorrow and Sunday, and then we'll feed them again on Monday. So yeah, I'll feed it out and then we'll uh, see what it looks like afterwards. Right, we have just finished feeding this out. Give these calves a little bit as well. They've got some hay here. If they want to eat some hay, a bit of roughage for them. 
And yeah, I said it would look like a lot of food, and it does. One little tip, I'm sure you all know it already, but um, really good way to spot if you've got any sort of first signs of a calf or a cow being ill, is when you feed them, do they all come up to feed? Because at the minute, every single animal in this shed is up at the feed phase feeding, tucking into their food. If you had anything that was feeling slightly off, or had something wrong with it, uh, the first thing they'll do is stop eating. So they might be back in their pen looking sorry for themselves, or they might just be stood not chewing their cud. So another thing we like to check is if they are back in their pen, are they chewing their cud? Because that's another sign. They, they will stop chewing a cud if they don't feel very well. Look at them. Scoffing their faces. Just makes it there easy on the weekend for uh, Craig and Phil. All they got to do is push in um, the feed. They obviously, you have to scrape and bed them every day, but um, one less job feeding. You've kicked your tub away already, Norm. You naughty bull. Vander here's become quite a softy. Likes having a scratch. He'll stand here. I want you to scratch his ears and where their horns are. Come on, you buddy. Yes, I know. Ho -ho. Right, here is our flooded road. So the farm's just up around the corner there. And then we go towards a little humpback bridge up here. You can see, it's not too deep. Now, the drain is here, which is actually clear. I managed to get the shovel and a pipe in it, and there's, without any resistance whatsoever. So the drain's unbung, but it just drains into the river, which is the other side of these trees. I'm guessing the water level is higher than the outlet, so it can't physically go anywhere at the minute. So it's not a lot I can do, but I mean, you can drive a car through it, so it's not too bad. Problem is, because it's at the bottom of the hill, there's water constantly feeding it from up there. So I might just see our neighbour there, they've got a, a ditch which gets dammed up by the silt. Let's see if I can move the silt, get some water going in the actual ditch rather than in the road. My suspicions were correct. The water that comes out one ditch over there crosses our neighbour's lane here. And what's coming down here, and just going straight on down the road. You can see where it eats the road out along the side. Um, instead of going in the ditch this side, they just dragged the leaves out with a shovel, made a bit of a dam there. Now it's all flowing nicely into there. So hopefully they'll give that water a chance to get away down there and uh, it can go in the ditch. I mean, it all ends up in the river in the same place, but at least it's in the road ditch and not in the road. Roads, especially on this lane around here, are absolutely terrible because they constantly have water running on them because the ditches aren't maintained. And um, yeah, it ends up battering the tractors, the machinery, our cars, and it's just no good. Here comes the Grice with a big tractor on a very little trailer. <laughs> He's taking some feed over to Rowden because we're buying everything in bulk this year, uh, just because it's a lot cheaper and, and we'll just ferry it over as and when we need it. Hey cows. Are you okay? Go on in. Make me shut the gate. We've got uh, 11 of our calves here. And in one of the fields at home, they were with the cull cows that we always keep at home. We don't ever send the cull cows uh, away. It's just easier for when we want to get rid of them. Um, they're actually on site and we've got to go fetch them from the off-ground. So these guys will be housed on Wednesday along with the rest of them next week. Um, this field's not faring too bad, but you can see they make a bit of mess around the feeder. Where the others are on the off-ground. Oh my word, is it getting wet. Um, they need to come in really. But it's not as simple as that here. There's got to be a process. The process of housing here isn't actually that simple. So these calves, when they come in, they get allocated to either a farm spare, a breeding heifer, a brown, blue or green um, plot animal or shed animal. Um, so they all get taken over to the science farm, put through the handling, they have their back shaved and then they'll get put into the various sheds and then you've got to bring whatever's over there that doesn't need to be over their back. And it's like a massive day's work. So that's why you have to plan that and that's happening next Wednesday. So I don't know, what's that? Four more days they've got to stay out. Me and Phil, we've got about an hour before we got to be in a meeting um, with Bruce, Alice and my dad. A lot of you probably don't know that my dad works here as well. Um, so what we're going to do is 
clean out some gutters because the last three days we've had torrential weather and the gutters are quite obviously full of leaves and rubbish so we're going to get the man crate, the harnesses, telehandler and we're going to get up there and clean out some of the gutters because it's no good all the water throwing itself into the sheds um, when they're blocked. Now hopefully it goes without saying but I'm not filming whilst I've got to fill up in the air uh, up near the tops of the roofs because it requires my full concentration but you can see the bucket, uh, the crate is locked on, the taps turn so there's no way I can adjust it from in the cab. Phil is harnessed in, got the harness on the carabiner and the non-slip or the non-full um, strap on him. That was all Lola tested on Tuesday so we know it's all good and effective and working properly. I'm just going to put him up on this roof, so we'll do this one in a minute. Right, time to go and clean up our mess we made. The only gutter that had anything substantial in was the uh, shed that joins the new one there. There was a lot of stuff in there, but I guess it takes all the leaves off those trees behind it. Right, whilst I'm in the handler with the dung bucket on, I'm just going to go out the back of our beef shed and uh, pick up all the stuff that doesn't go down the grids when we scrape out in the mornings. Sort of every couple days, every two or three days, just come down here with a dung bucket and pick up all the solid stuff and take it to the midden. There's another half a bucket there, I might come back and get that in a minute. Cows are all still eating. Well, we've only got a little mucky bit at the minute because obviously everything's out, the midden has been emptied and we haven't really had anything to put here but there's a little bit of stuff there. Next week this machines have to go back to Rowden to start feeding and bedding up over there. So this is a Lucas wagon that's got a flywheel on the front for throwing straw. It's also got the tub on the back and a door on the side for feeding so there's two jobs in one. That one will go on that tractor which means that we need to get a hedge trimmer off and put onto this machine here for the winter or my tractor can go on it for the time being if we haven't finished hedge trimming. We then need to sort out that tractor to make sure it starts all the time. I'm hoping it will when we're using it every day. I can't see a reason why it won't. Because, um, say, middle of next week onwards, we will be on our full winter routine. The animals are all going to be inside. And uh, yeah, we'll be busy feeding, bedding, scraping, and all that jazz. I always like to leave this full for the morning, so you haven't got to fart around and do it first thing. So that's left ready for the weekend. We're just going to go and bag up some cake for Craig in the morning, because Craig and Phil are here at the weekend. Um, so we'll try and give them a bit of a head start for tomorrow morning at least. I'm just naturally gifted, Josh. <laughs> gonna park the truck a bit closer. Hey! Eh? Gonna park the truck a bit closer. <laughs> Yesterday, I think you had a uh, cake too, close. I never, I never get it right. Right, meeting over. Here's the uh, end of the week here at Northwick. So me and Gus, I'm just giving a bit of a walk to. Just going to go around one last little check on the animals before we go home tonight. Always like to see them last thing before we go. Make sure everything's hunky-dory. Yeah, thank you very much, guys, for watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That would be awesome. Let the dog go. Meow. Loads of links in the description for uh, all my other socials, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Facebook. Uh, there's also a merch link for hoodies, hats. There's some new beanies there as well if you want one of those. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on a, another video very soon. Cheerio.